watching gears. You know, every once in a while, as you go through life, you'll hit a milestone that's worth recognizing. And today's show is one of those milestones because we have officially reached our 100th episode of Gears. And it has been a great ride. But in that many shows, it's easy for you to miss some of the stuff that we've done. So we have put together a one hour special of the history of Gears. And since this is a 30 minute show, you're gonna get it in two installments. So for the next two shows, we're gonna walk through those 100 episodes, the test drives, the projects, the things behind the scenes that you've never seen. And we're gonna show you how all this came together and maybe even answer some questions you might have about the show or the projects or whatever. Now the idea for Gears had been banging around in my head for a long time because I knew that there was a need for a TV show that embraced all aspects of the gearhead world. Cars, trucks, motorcycles, airplanes, guns, anything mechanical. And it had to be something that encouraged people to get involved, to get their hands dirty, to build something. That way they could learn some skills that they could actually use throughout their life. And the only way you can do that is by demonstration. So it was important that Gears have some great how-to segments. Smells like pee in here. I'm talking things like how to replace rusty sheet metal. How to do fiberglass or exhaust work. How to shave a door handle. Okay, the first thing you need to do is strip the door, which means the door panels and handles need to come out, as well as the windows and the window tracks. Now this is also a good time to clean things up and check for rust because you don't want to do this modification on a rusty door that needs to be reskinned or replaced. How to install a locker in a rear end. Because inserting a locker into this rear end is simple and won't hurt a bit. Trust me, I'm a doctor. <laughs> We're going in. How to fabricate your own motor mounts. We're completely starting from scratch on this one. So what we have to do is build something that will connect the factory motor mount to the frame. or how to turn a long bed truck into a short bed truck. Matter of fact, it was pretty much anything that could help somebody rebuild or restore a project or demonstrate a new tool or technique. You don't use little body hammers on this stuff. You gotta use a big hammer. Not the BFH, the little FH. Yeah, much better. I'm gonna come in and do a little bit of contouring down here in the bottom, kinda roll that in. That can't be good. There you go. <laughs> Holy cow. Look at that, man. They're like little lizard skeletons. <laughs> Get the spider in there. <laughs> I 
It usually involves speculation on how to stick the biggest possible engine into the smallest vehicle. Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? The biggest engine in the smallest vehicle. <laughs> yeah, I know I've wondered about that before. We got nice shrinkage right around this innermost line. That is what we were after. Of course, the rest of it <laughs> looks like a potato chip, but we're gonna take care of that by shrinking to this line, then to that one, then to that one. It's gonna draw it all in. Here's a little special technique. That I learned right from the guys at Jeep how to take these fenders off. <laughs> Simple as that. On a project like this, you may need to use something as common as a sawzall, as sophisticated as a plasma cutter, or something as basic as a big <laughs> fancy hammer. Whatever it takes to get the job done. There you go, quite a difference from what we started out with. And all it's gonna take you to do this is a little bit of spare time and a few bucks, and you will have headlights that are crystal clear and look brand new. Even lights like these that have almost 200,000 miles on them. But the real value of this is gonna come when you turn these lights on at night and you can actually see where you're going. A successful automotive project takes planning and organization, but instead of using an old tablet or notebook, there's the Gears Project Planning Book. This unique workbook was designed to help you lay out a project, the parts, the tools, and the cost, so you can stay on track. It even has places to attach photos and document your progress to keep you motivated. And if you ever decide to sell the vehicle, it serves as a complete history of what's been done. If you're in the middle of an automotive project or thinking of starting one, the Gears Project Planning Book is the best way to lay it out and make it happen. Hey, welcome back to Gears and part one of our 100th episode special. Now, so far, we've been walking through the how-to segments and how those come about. But as popular as the how-to segments are, they're even more popular when they're wrapped around a specific project vehicle. And that's because a person can actually see what you started with, follow along on what it takes to build it, and actually see what the final outcome is. And that's where the criteria for the Gears project vehicle came from. They had to be real running vehicles, no fake TV stuff here. And they also have to be as unique and as diverse as you, because everybody likes something a little different. So some are late model vehicles, like the Ram 1500 that we used to create the Dragon Wagon. By upgrading the suspension, interior and body, slapping on a supercharger and throwing on a ton of accessories. This truck became a fire-breathing beast that was a blast to drive and definitely lived up to its name. How about those Falcon tires? <laughs> in the fall of 2011, it had the honor of being a feature vehicle in the Mopar booth at SEMA because this project allowed people to see what was possible with the newer model vehicle, and at the same time, it helped Dodge relaunch its truck division with the new name, Ram. Other projects are designed to make you think outside the box, like the time we took a Mazda Miata and decided to make a modern-day Cobra out of it. This was most people's initial reaction. What? 
A Mazda Miata? What are you crazy? That's a that's a girl's car, man. However, people's reaction began to change when we stuffed in over 400 horsepower in the form of a small block Ford V8. Hey, you want to put this one in for me? You want to put it in? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. And upgraded the suspension. And by the time we put the Italia body kit on it, people were clamoring to see what else we were going to do to it and eager to see the final payoff of this unique sports car. When we rolled the finished Banshee out on the track for a day of testing, the little car lived up to its name and screamed around the course all day and even gave a supercharged Corvette a run for its money. This is one of the best short road course cars I've ever driven. Another type of project that people have sitting in their garages across the nation are hot rods based off of 30s or 40s cars. An example of that is the 32 Ford that became the Rat Roaster. Designed to look like something that might have rolled down the streets in the late 60s, the Rat Roaster literally started as sheet metal panels and slowly grew into a real car over the next few seasons. Since so many aspects of this buildup were unique or relevant to what a lot of gearheads are building in their garages today, it was featured on a lot of shows and it took a while to reach completion. But once it roared to life, the rat put on a heck of a show and performed flawlessly as I ripped it around. And in doing so, it reminded everyone who saw it why the 32 Ford Roadster continues to be at the top of every Hot Rodder's wish list. A custom Gibson guitar and a Ravel model kit were just two more elements that made this car a fun one to watch. Now, a lot of people ask me what my favorite thing is about this project, and that's kind of tough because there's a lot of cool things here. But I guess a couple of my favorites is the microphone shifter that operates the exhaust cutouts and the little guitar that Ravel put in the model kit. Those are just cool. When Stacy David makes house calls in the big Gears Nation truck, it makes for some pretty special moments. But if they can't come to your garage, the next best thing to do is check out the stuff they have online to help you out. Things like DVDs, wiring and build books, apparel and fender covers are just some of the things you'll find to help you with your project or make a great gift for that certain car nut in your life. If you're ready to get out there, build something, and then go smoke the tires on it, StacyDavid.com can help you do that. Hey, welcome back to Gears and our countdown of some of the greatest moments of the past 100 episodes. Now, we've already talked about the how-to aspect of the show. We've shown you some finished projects. Now we're going to show you some projects that are about to be finished. <laughs> yeah, there you go. One very popular project is a junkyard tow truck <laughs> called Heavy Metal. Steady as she goes. That demonstrates what you can do with used parts, or a limited budget, or an odd body style. This truck represents Gear's commitment to working on things that you won't see anywhere else. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Virtually a poster boy for second chances, a junkyard truck was fitted with a hot diesel engine, and junkyard axles joined a junkyard wrecker bed, and some vintage beer cakes were thrown in for good measure. But this isn't a rat rod and it isn't a junker, because it's also been fitted with state-of-the-art air suspension, new toolboxes, and a lot of other things to make this a nice blend of old and new, resulting in a totally unique vehicle. Now, I still have some work to cover on the show with this truck, and a few more surprises too. So, you'll see it again before we can turn the key and stomp the pedal. Another project that's nearing completion is the V8 Interceptor. 
Now this is a late 60s muscle car project that's designed to show you what's available in the aftermarket. It's also designed to show you what kind of horsepower is available that you can run down the street or the strip or a road course with. With a state-of-the-art front and rear suspension, a ton of subtle body modifications, super slick black paint, and almost 850 horsepower sticking through the hood, the V8 Interceptor is the car your mama warned you about and the kind of car your dad had before he got married. The muscle car market is one of the hottest things going right now because people are restoring them both original and as Hot Rod Pro Touring cars. And the how-to that a project like this brings to the table is invaluable to someone like you who's building a car in his garage. When people ask me what my favorite part is about this buildup, I think the fact that it's a Cougar is number one because it's always been one of my favorite cars and they're usually overlooked when people are looking for a project. Then of course there's the matching wood grain dash and the Paul Reed Smith guitar and of course I love that Boss 9 engine and then there's the side pipes and of course the flared rear fenders and the name. If you've got a cool project and would like to show millions of other gearheads what you're working on, you need to join Gears Nation. This is a free, interactive online community of auto enthusiasts that will allow you to learn from, share with, and encourage others, and at the same time, show off your project. There are also premium memberships available for access to special merchandise and the entire Gears catalog. If you're into mechanical things, you're welcome on Gears Nation. And who knows, you might even see your project on TV. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are celebrating our 100th episode by taking a look back on how the show started, how it's evolved over the years, some of the projects that have rolled out of here, and some projects that are about to roll out of here. There's the SLC Supercar. A project like this is designed to demonstrate cutting edge technology and engineering that can take you beyond 200 miles an hour. And of course, Sergeant Rock the big beast that's been patiently waiting its turn to roll those big tires. And that's a question that we get a lot. Why do some of these projects take longer than others? And the answer is similar to what you might be facing on your project in your garage. For example, a project like this that's a full ground up where every part is virtually handmade takes a lot more time in fabrication and engineering than a resto mod project that utilizes the aftermarket and original parts. Of course, a resto mod project takes more time than an original style project, and an original style build takes more time than a makeover style project that utilizes an existing car. Of course, a makeover project takes more time than the bolt-on, which is the easiest, simplest thing to do. And it's important on gears that we cover all types of those projects because everybody is into something different. Now, of course, doing that means that I don't get the time to spend on these that I'd like to, so they naturally take longer. But they all will eventually get finished and we will put them through the paces for you. Now, another area of gears that is really popular is the quick tip. And the idea behind that was to show those simple, common sense solutions that can really help somebody out in the shop. And we've had a lot of fun doing them. Now, Quick Tip. Brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Your shoe should be something with a leather upper, so if a hot cherry hits it, it's gonna bounce off and not burn through and give you a hot foot. Tennis shoes are just asking for trouble. What you do is take a standard paintbrush and cut off the bristles to where they're about three quarters of an inch long. So what you have is a perfect detailing brush that's firm enough to get all the residue out it's big enough to do big areas, and it's still soft enough to not damage your paint. All you have to do is go down and get yourself some of these clear plastic bowls like this, then take one of them, cut the top off to make it more manageable, and then punch a hole in the center. Then you just hold it up against the work, stick the drill up through it, and you drill your hole. 
The clear cup allows you to see what you're doing and at the same time catches all the shavings so you don't get a face full of chips. Now what you do is take your shop vac, slide it into the pantyhose, and then stick the shop vac down into the tight area. The suction will pick up the part, the pantyhose will keep it from going into the vacuum cleaner. Problem solved. Now of course you can pick up a shop vac at any hardware store. The nylon stockings, <laughs> you're on your own for that. And now, what are you working on? Brought to you by Carrera, motorsports at home. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Phil Martin. He's up there in Lebanon, Maine, and his car is a 1950 Buick. Now, he said the car was his dad's. His dad did a quick restoration back in the early 90s with some buddies, and they drove it a while, and then his father passed away. So the car sat, and it sat a long time. Matter of fact, until last year, when Phil finally pulled it into his garage and got busy. Check this out. First thing he did was subframe the front end. He zed the rear to get the stance and the suspension right. Then they chopped the roof three and a half inches and cut and pancaked the trunk to match the new fastback roof line. And the front and rear bumpers were welded to the car as well as the rear fenders to smooth down the body, make it as seamless as possible. And the interior has the stock bench seats and Phil says, you know, it still needs to be completed, but that doesn't affect the way that it drives, so he's driving it now. And that's what's cool about having a project like this. Now, he says that everyone that sees this car says that is the way that that car should have looked from Buick. And he says that's a pretty high compliment, since he doesn't really consider himself a body guy. Well, guess what, Phil? You're a body guy now. Looking at these pictures, you did a really good job on this thing. Now, he says this car is a labor of love. He knows his dad is looking down, giving him a thumbs up and that's why he likes this car so much. Well, Phil, awesome project. To recognize that, we hooked up with our buddies at Carrera. We're gonna give you a race car set so you can start building your own slot car layout to race your buddies with. Also, we're gonna give you a year subscription to Hot Rod Magazine to give you some ideas for that next project of yours and one of our electrical wiring books to help you lay out the wiring on your next project. Now, the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, you got to go to Gears Nation on the website and submit your project because we pull all of our What Are You Working Ons right up at Gears Nation. And you definitely want to be involved in some of the cool stuff we've got coming up. All right, that finishes up episode 100. Wow, it's been a wild ride. And we want to thank you guys for watching us and making it possible for us to do what we love to do. Hopefully over the years, we've inspired you to get out there and work on something because there really is nothing like building something with your own two hands. We'll see you next week.